Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another quick video here in Microsoft's Flight Simulator with the Airbus A32 and X where we're going to be talking about a new feature that has been added by the Fly-by-Wire team and that is the nose wheel and tiller operation. So the tiller handle showed here is how pilots control the aircraft when they're on the ground and taxiing instead of using the rudder pedals which in Microsoft Flight Simulator is how we have been steering the aircraft when we are taxiing and manoeuvring onto the runway. Fly-by-wire have now however added the tiller axes into their aircraft so we're going to go ahead and look at how we set this up. So if you have a spare axis in your hardware setup, go to the control options and I use the uh, slide stick from Thrustmaster and I've got this slider just here which I'm going to assign to my tiller. Now there is no tiller per se in Microsoft Flight Simulator so fly by wire have instead mapped the mixture for axes minus 100 to 100%. Make sure you select the correct one. You would map this just like you would any other so I'm going to start scanning move Move my uh, slider up there there it is and then I can validate that be careful however if you have got whatever axis you are mapping to this set to control anything else in the simulator you don't want to have two conflicting control inputs going in as this was also set to my trim wheel so I just need to go ahead and remove that once we have set this new axis up and it's all ready to go, then we need to go into the tablet or the EFB in the aircraft and actually turn this new feature on. So come down to the cogwheel and to the sim options and right down at the bottom, there is the option to separate the tiller from the rudder. So let's go ahead and enable that and we should be about set to go. Let's call the tug over, we'll get pushed back and then we'll check out this new feature. Now there are a few things we need to be aware of to ensure that the tiller's functionality is working. The yellow pressure system of the Airbus has to be available and pressurized. As you can see at the moment it is not. One engine must at least be running. At the moment engine number one is running and if we want to pressurize the yellow system with just engine number one running we need to turn on the yellow hydraulic pump. If we come back down here and check the lower ECAM once we've turned that on the yellow system becomes pressurized. This is what we would do if we were doing a single engine taxi. We'd start engine number one, turn on the yellow hydraulic pump so that nose wheel steering was functional. As we're going to start both engines today, I'm going to turn that off and start engine two. But you'll see as I've turned that off, that pressure in the yellow system is now dropping. Let's come down, start engine number two, and we should start to see that increase again. And there it goes. You also need to make sure that anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on and that nose wheel steering isn't disconnected. You can see this on the upper ECAM. It will be disconnected when you're being pushed back as the ground crew will disconnect the, uh, the nose wheel steering whilst they control the pushback of the aircraft. Once the tug disappears, that message should disappear and you regain control again. The tug driver is now leaving, so our nose wheel steering will be reconnected. We'll do the after start engine flows and we will taxi out to the runway. Now, for this demonstration video, I haven't got any passengers loaded, so the moment I release the parking brake on idle thrust, we're probably going to start gently rolling forward. And that's normal for the Airbus, that isn't a bug, that's something that Flybyware have got absolutely spot on. So I'm now using the tiller axes that I've just mapped in order to move and you can see as we if I just zoom out a little bit here as I'm moving uh, over to the right uh, no rudder input from me whatsoever. Now the rudder will still give you a small little bit of control the rudder will give you up to six degrees uh, deflection whereas the tiller gives you up to 75 so at slow speeds the tiller is of course how pilots control the aircraft. If we have a quick look from the outside you'll see here using the rudder a slight movement over to the right and uh, left but now if I uh, if I leave the rudder alone and just start to use the tiller there you go you can see much more uh, control over the nose wheel steering with the new tiller axes 
Let's get out to the runway. We'll line up and have a look how the uh, the new addition to the aircraft works when we're actually accelerating down the runway. Now it is fair to say that this does take some getting used to and if like me you don't currently have rudder pedals available then trying to use this setup is a little bit complicated. Trying to use the little slider on the side stick whilst you've got the rudder set to the twist handle uh, can create a bit of a logistical problem. So for me personally if you don't have rudder pedals then I would still leave this new uh, tiller axis turned off. Once you had got rudder pedals of course then I would bind my tiller axis to the twist handle operation of the side stick. Applying full power then here rolling down the runway I am no longer using the tiller. The tiller becomes uh, inoperable quite early on when we get to these, uh, these fast speeds. So this is holding the center line just using the rudder as we did before and of course it works flawlessly. So as I already mentioned it does take a little bit of getting used to and it's certainly very different compared to the rudder that you've been using before to steer. The biggest change is that the steering with the rudder on the ground only turns the nose wheel up to six degrees which isn't sufficient enough for normal taxi operations and turns. The Tiller steering needs to be operated with a little bit of foresight and nice and slowly as the nose wheel is turning rather slow. This means that you need to start steering a little bit earlier and slower to make sure the turns are working and the nose wheel angle is limited by the aircraft speed. So no more than 10 knots in a turn and of course the maximum in a straight line is 30 knots for the Airbus A320. So guys, let me know down in the comments below how you're getting on with the new Tiller Axis and whether or not you are going to be using it. If you found this video useful, please do hit that like button. It really does help the channel. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and content. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.